Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the RS220 from Sennheiser. So their selling point for this one, the big one, is digital wireless uncompressed stereo sound. Now this is a higher end successor, so guys, don't look now, but this is an expensive wireless headset. So this is their successor to their previous generation sort of 180 series products with um, what they are considering to be an upgrade, which is okay, high-end digital wireless headphone system for uncompressed stereo sound and outstanding standing wearing comfort. So these are an Oakum's, op, Oakum, open circumaural design which basically puts them uh, kind of like a 558 or 598 in terms of uh, what type of headphone they are. The transmitter features digital and analog inputs. That's actually kind of a cool feature to have. Power on off, balance control, volume control, ergonomic and adjustable headband for an excellent and secure fit, rechargeable integrated batteries, multi-purpose transmitter, also functions as an easy charge cradle and docking station. So we're gonna open it up. They include instructions for how to open it, which are basically amount to cut this and open this, all right? If these are anything like some of the other Sennheiser products I've encountered, they're gonna be a bit of a challenge to, to get open and depackified. So inside, what do we find? All right, they're heavy, so there's that. Hopefully most of the weight is the docking station itself and not so much the headphones because it's nice to have a nice uh, lightweight headphone design. The headphones themselves are powered by a couple of AAA batteries, so I'm not expecting that to add a ton of weight. Sennheiser estimates a six to eight hour uh, operation time per charge. So they're giving you a number of different plugs for the cradle itself. There's the one that I'll be using, the North American one, as well as a power adapter with cable. And it looks like some audio adapters as well. There we go. So look at that. So we got RCA cables. We've got just a regular single that I guess they're intending you to use that as uh, optical digital audio. And then finally a three and a half mil to RCA adapter. So that's what we've got inside there. Next, we've got another accessory box. Very clever packaging on this one. They kind of hid all the accessory box in little recessed spots in the plastic. So there's your quick start guide showing you the system that you just bought. And that's the only thing inside that box. Next up, we've got Ah, plastic popping button bits here. There we go. So now we have the base station itself, which charges the headphones like this. So you can see these two contact points here on the top. And then there are two contact points here next to the adjustable headband. Then we've got the headphones themselves, which look like one of Sennheiser's more premium products. So on the mid range and lower end stuff, you don't generally find you know, all the nice little chrome trims and stuff like that. Now, Sennheiser's saying these are open headphones, which basically amounts to um, often a more um, natural sound, particularly for those who prefer open headphones, but not everyone does. And it also means that you're gonna be more likely to hear ambient noise, and the people around you are more likely to hear what you're listening to. So I'm hoping that the, uh, that the ear cups are labeled. Oh, so you pop this out before use, so I'm guessing that allows the batteries to make contact. And there we go. They are clearly labeled on the back, left and right. There's also some controls on the back so you can change your input, turn them on and off. And then you can also adjust your volume, the balance and the volume down. So let's go ahead and uh, put these on and see how they feel. If I had to complain about something, it would be that the uh, the headband is a little bit on the narrow side. I do prefer a thicker headband because I find it uh, distributes the pressure of the headphones a little bit better. But with that said, the ear cups are very large to the point where they don't even touch my earrings, which hang down under my ears. So I think pretty much no matter what size your ears are, you're not gonna have too much trouble with that. The controls are easy to reach and because of the shape of them, it's pretty easy to tell what's what and where. So there's down, there's up, and there's the on and off button right there. The ear cups are quite a hard foam, so you can see that they come back very quickly. See that? So uh, what I suspect is that they wouldn't be immediately super comfortable, but after a bit of a break-in period, you shouldn't have too much trouble with them, much like my older 555s. So I wanna show you guys the base station. Here's all the stuff you got for ins and outs. So you can, so you have an output, there's a pass-through, there's your input, uh, there's your in and out for both 
uh, optical digital as well as coaxial digital. You can change the levels here. You've got your pairing button and your power in. And other than that, it just, oh, okay, so there's your power. Ooh, touch sensitive buttons on the front. So there's your power on there as well. So you take that off. And the, the idea, I guess, would be for it to kind of sit here or sit on sort of presumably you'd have some kind of, oh, that's bad. Whoops. Okay, and it's ruggedly built, I hope. Anyway, you'd have it sitting on like a little table next to your couch so that it's ready to go at a moment's notice. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. I just want to see if there's any specs. So Sennheiser's claiming a 90 decibel signal to noise ratio for the transmitter base itself. You don't have the option to use the headphones wired, so they're purely wireless. So I don't even know why they bother giving you an impedance rating, but there you go. They're 150 ohm headphones. And I think that's pretty much most of what people will be concerned about. I wouldn't mind figuring out how to pop the batteries out of here, but it's possible they actually don't really intend for you to do that unless uh, there's some kind of a, a compelling reason that you'd need to later on down the road. Yeah, there we go. All right, look at that. So one battery in there, Recyco, not for retail sale. Look at that, we've got some little custom batteries there. And then the other one is, I guess, in the other ear cup. There it goes. So you just pop this little guy off here pop out the battery. So if you didn't want to wait for them to recharge, you actually could swap the batteries uh, quite quickly and painlessly. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And as always, make sure, I mean, I haven't tried these, but make sure you check out reviews online and whatnot, because what I did see is that while I had, there weren't really any complaints about the audio quality, they were compared to something like a 598. Uh, some people have been having trouble with interference with this particular headset, and they've been finding that uh, it can disconnect from the base station sometimes, so make sure that you don't have too much interference before you go ahead and drop this kind of money on them, or Here's another sort of smart thing to do. Make sure you buy them somewhere with a good return policy so that if you do have trouble, then you can, uh, you can return them and get something else. 